Alright, you'd be proud of me. I left the house. <laughs> Went to the Ron Paul meeting here on Maui with uh, these two uh, Ron Paul people that came over. Uh, Kate T. Ms. Redman and Ms. Walker, Megan, held the meeting. A um, couple of little balls of energy. Very sweet young women that are 100% committed to making Ron Paul president and getting him to win the Hawaii caucus. Apparently, uh, Hawaii has been targeted. Um, let's see. So here's some stuff that was interesting from that meeting. First off, uh, the military guys, you military people, you can vote in our caucus. So if you know people that are in the military that think that, oh, because they don't have, uh, they're not in the district, right? Oh, ever since statehood, it's a long story. But anyway, you military guys <laughs> could, can uh, vote in the Republican caucus. Uh, so you can vote for Ron Paul. So if you know people that are in the military, right, that are active duty, they don't have to have, right, because a lot of them have mainland addresses and so forth. If they're stationed on a base here, they can go down to the caucus and register and vote. Uh, that's important for the military guys to know because you know the military overwhelmingly supports Ron Paul. So if you can get some military guys out, let them know. Put this, if you can, you know, get this video to people and let them know that they can vote in the caucus, which is March 13th, which is coming right up. Uh, let's see, phone banking. I'm so not phone banking. <laughs> don't have the... Anyway, I don't have the uh, disposition for the phone, phone banking. What do you mean you like Romney? What, are you just stupid? Um, yeah, that'll go over really well. Um, and I also noticed that we, I saw this thing. I don't have it with me, but they had 10 issues. Which are the most... Out of these issues, which are the most important to you? The Federal Reserve wasn't even on the list. And uh, myself and another guy uh, asked why that was. And uh, they basically said, well, it's because the average person can't wrap their mind around the concept. Or <laughs> we want to keep it simple. So they had stuff like abortion on there and all the side issues. Anyway, we're there. Um, but, well, the economy was there, which is not a side issue, which is kind of the Federal Reserve. But the reason why the economy is doing what it's doing is because of the banking. And I swear you can explain that to people in five minutes or less. But let's see. Um... Also, they are very aware of vote fraud, although they wouldn't say it out loud. And they had uh, made it clear that the Ron Paul campaign and the Super PAC have lawyers and people that are on this. Um, and they want at least two poll watchers at each location. We have only a few days if you want to be a poll watcher to become a poll watcher. I'm going to be a poll watcher on the 13th. I will show up for two hours or so uh, along with somebody else over here on Maui. And uh, I think, what, there's only, I don't remember what they said, 53 or 63 precincts. I meant to write that down. So they only need, like, 128 people total in the whole state to go down there and watch the polls, unlike some other states where you needed, you know, thousands. Um, literally, because there's, like, 500 precincts. So if you put two on each, a little math. Um, and it was amazing to me that they were very careful about talking about vote fraud, and I stayed till a little afterwards to have a talk with them and uh, try to find out about, you know, who it is that we, you know, can press the issue with, with uh, lawyers from the campaign or from the super PAC or whatever. And uh, I assure you that in Hawaii, if there is hanky-panky, I will be one of the people that indeed stands up and makes a complaint. Right? And that's the way you, you got to do it. If you're in Maine and you know of the vote fraud, you need to make a complaint. It's as simple as that. We don't, you know, we can't dwell on it, and we have to look forward to the to what's going to go on in Florida. And by the way, these guys are very um, clear about the delegate situation, that the uh, mainstream media isn't even making it, uh, you know, isn't telling an accurate story. They wouldn't say lie. They wouldn't say the mainstream media is lying. They wouldn't, I mean, the sweetest women, I just love it. They, I mean, they're just very diplomatic, very, the exact right people for the job. Exactly, I mean, I'm so not cut out for politics, right? Because you, you have, there has to be diplomacy and there has to be, right? Anyhow, not my thing, for sure. So, here are the many, many links. Look how many links I have down there. There's like tons of them. All right, so uh, let's go over a few of the things that are going on. Vote fraud being one of them. Fraud, fraud, and more fraud. Uh, money fraud, right? <laughs> okay, so there's great quotes, right? 
Under the Federal Reserve Act, panics are scientifically created, and the present panic is the first scientifically created one. Worked out just as we figure a mathematical problem. That would be Charles Lindbergh Sr. Um, and then I put a link to many, many more quotes on the Federal Reserve. Our, the, the last of our honest politicians and presidents all said the same thing about this central bank. We have been at war with the central bank from day one in this country. The central bank is the main issue. The main thing is the main thing. And it was somewhat disappointing to see that out of the ten issues they talk about, they don't even bring up the Federal Reserve because they don't want to, you know, confuse people. You know, so they keep the issues simpler than that. And then once they bring them on, right, then you give them more and more information. But like you said, when you first start out, you can't hit them over the head. But I have noticed that when I go out, more and more people are uh, talking about the Federal Reserve, and I've had people <laughs> schooling me. It's great, though. I mean, I, I enjoy it. They're schooling me on the Federal Reserve and how, you know, it's a private corporation and they're loaning their money out and we got to put an end to this and so on and so forth. Like, you know, this is going to be news. And uh, I guess to a lot of people it still is news. Uh, the, Catherine, the Catherine Austin Fitz video, oh, my goodness, she talks very clearly about who are these people, right? Here are the questions. Who are these people and what are the, what's their agenda? And there, if you don't know who Catherine Austin Fitz is, you should find out and watch more of her videos and more of the stuff that she's done. She talks about the attack poodles coming out whenever you, whenever you're, uh, you know, do something that's against the status quo. But see, we now have the ability to document the many uh, things that weren't even just like 10, 15 years ago. We can put the documents on the internet so that these guys can't lie and as much as they used to be able to, can't defraud the people as much as they used to be able to by, you know, trying to change public opinion with, you know, these quote-unquote attack poodles. Um, because you can just say, look, here are the documents. Here is the proof. Here is the evidence. This isn't hearsay. This isn't conspiracy theory. Here's what they're doing. Uh, great video on how the fall of Greece affects you and how that can happen here in the United States. Uh, quietly, U.S. debt to GDP passed 101%. I'm telling you, we're entering the final stages. There is no saving it. There's no saving the Federal Reserve note. It's mathematical certainty that the thing is going to collapse. You need to be prepared for that. Ron Paul is the only one talking about that. This is why he's such a threat. Um, because the national agenda. Here's what happens. Iceland flips the bank off, <laughs> basically, and uh, shows that uh, sovereign currencies and you know, basically having sound money and, and uh, debt-free money that is not issued by these bankers is a good thing, and you can survive. Uh, anyway, the Iceland story is a great story, and we need to emulate that story here in the United States. Uh, some charts that Barack Obama would rather you not know about. Here is a must-watch. This is John Stossel's Illegal Everything. I know it's Fox News. I know. I know it's John Stossel. I know. And I know it's only 80% of the story, because he doesn't... Go, he could take it the next step, and he doesn't. But he tells you the 80%, which is, here are all the ridiculous things that are going on in the United States, all the various laws. And what we have is a guy like Ron Paul who would go in there and repeal some of these laws and might foster a generation of politicians that would go up there and actually get rid of some of these unconstitutional laws and obey the Constitution. Right? Individual liberty, prosperity, peace. Ron Paul... Okay, you don't get that from the other guys. You get war. You get, oh, let's give the bankers as much money as we can. Let's give them bailouts. It's trillions of dollars. Ron Paul trying to put an end to that, trying to audit the Fed, trying to wake people up to the fact that we've got a serious problem with the central bankers. And then everything else, like I said, it all just, everything he says makes sense. Um, and here's a couple from the Kaiser Report. Those are two really good ones that you might want to watch. Uh, a nice official word list of the stuff that they monitor on social networking sites. So those are if you are afraid of the government, and most of you are, uh, those are words you might want to avoid when you're making Facebook posts and putting, you know, information out. Um, let's see here. Oh, just link after link after link. I got so much stuff here. War fraud. There's no evidence of nukes. They don't have it. There's 16 astonishing facts the U.S. government doesn't want you to know about Iran. Um... Pakistan, we have now turned them against us. Great, great job. Does Pakistan have nukes? Yes, they have nukes. All right, war with Iran is insanity. And again, uh, we we're we're gonna have if we we're gonna have more problems than we can handle if we kick that dog because the, they got a couple of big dogs behind them, Russia and China, who have made it perfectly clear that if we go to war with Iran, we're going to war with them. And the bankers would love that. They would love it. 
Um, Two hundred dollar oil coming as central banks go crazy with the you know printing because it, even though gasoline consumption is down, oil consumption is down, prices are up for a couple of reasons. One, because it's a rig, but two, because as these bankers print more and more money, making each dollar or each bit of fiat currency out there worth less and less, they have to charge more and more for the commodities. That's why gold and silver are going to go up. It's not so much that the intrinsic value of gold and silver is suddenly rising. It's the fact that the value of fiat currencies that they're denominated in is falling. So in other words, you need more of the same currency to buy the same amount of whatever it is, oil or silver or gold or wheat or whatever commodities. Um, and this is a very simple concept. Uh, let's see here. Uh, some information on Israel. Israel, not our friend. Israel is not our friend. With friends like that, we don't need enemies. Let Israel do its own thing. Israel is, is, is perfectly capable of handling its own business. But sending our boys to fight and die, you know, all war is done by deception, and Israel is great at deception and getting Americans to do their work for them. Uh, you know, many people have never heard of the USS Liberty. Take a look at the link about the USS Liberty. Uh, if you didn't know about it, you should know about it. Again, Washington foiling its own terror plots. Excellent. Uh, right? They make the terrorists up, and then they stop them from committing acts of terror. Really? What's the point of that? Well, the point is to keep you in fear, because ruling by fear is much easier than ruling with, uh, you know, good ideas like Ron Paul. Um, let's see here. So, again, links on the delegates, links on the Ron Paul uh, pack, the super pack, and, of course, uh, oh, one more link on the uh, fatally flawed, so you can get the idea that, no, really, it's election fraud. It's fraud. Those machines, it's fraud. Um, I don't care what they say. I've talked to Bev. Well, I haven't talked like this, but I've emailed back and forth with Bev Harris and a few other people, watch the vote and so forth, because, like I said, the thing is mathematics, and there are mathematical formulas you can use to you know, judge those statistics, whether they are you know, statistically possible or not. And more often than not, it's impossible that it's statistically impossible what they're doing in the story that they're trying to feed. So what's the theater that they want? The theater that they want is Ron Paul can't win. The theater that they want is Ron Paul hasn't won a caucus, therefore he can't win. That's the theater that they want. But what they're not saying, and they're not, the story they're not telling is the delegate story, and the other story that they're not telling is the vote fraud story. Because according to the mainstream media, everything is fine. Go back to sleep. Everything's fine. Everything is well in the republic. Now, I said it over and over again. We've got three options here. We have, well, actually it's four, but we don't want to use the last option. We have ballot box. We have soapbox. Here I am on my soapbox. Right? <laughs> Get on your soapbox. Make a video. Tell your friends. We have uh, jury box, which is why I have the fully informed jury links and so forth, because that's the last bastion of defense. Right? Nullification and jury nullification were there for a purpose, and it wasn't Jim Crow. It's exactly the opposite. It's so that, you know, it started out with, even if the guy is guilty of sin, he's a runaway slave, they don't convict. Because they don't agree with the law that says that they have to return the slave back to the South. Right? That was the first, that was among the first uses of jury nullification. It wasn't so that the Southern states could keep their slaves, so that they could nullify the laws that said we had to get rid of slavery. That's exactly not what the case was. Okay, if you understand your history and you read your history, uh, Tom Woods has some great videos about nullification. Okay, and again, if, if it's unconstitutional, it's a law that you don't have to obey, and the states should be able to nullify those laws. And now what we're seeing, uh, there's so much going on, I can't even get into it. I got, use these links. You know, even the whole concept of uh, the National Defense Authorization Act, I have friends that watch Fox News incessantly, and they've, they, they don't know anything about it. That's how great our media is <laughs> at informing the people. Anyhow, understand that in Hawaii, the military can vote. That's the, the military guys. You can get out and vote in our caucuses. If you want to watch a precinct, then you need to get in touch with people uh, from the uh, campaign uh, here on Maui or on Oahu. I'll put up the information there in the links below. Uh, get out there, and again, don't let what you can't do stop you from what you can do, right? you got to work ten times harder. Hawaii can actually be won. It actually can. 
and I see the support. Like, like I said, tonight, I, tons of people couldn't make it because they got kids. And I, got, I saw lots of people that I know that are Ron Paul supporters that weren't there. And yet, still, that was probably the largest meeting uh, those two uh, women had seen in the state of Hawaii. And it's just little old Maui where we only have 100,000 people. There's, you know, 1.2 on Oahu. Anyhow, get out there and do whatever you can. Use my links. Uh, thanks for all the support. Ron Paul, 2012.